Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wait Where We Talk About podcast, episode 173. My name is Brett, aka Enigma9011, and today we're flying solo to talk some fun topics with you guys. If you guys want to catch the podcast live, you can always go over to twitch.tv slash Enigma9011. Drop a follow there and you'll be notified when we go live with the podcast or stream. Check it out over there. Join the conversation. Join in on all the chaos. But if you can't catch it live, that's A-OK. Go over to YouTube and podcast services the very next week where it's broken out topic by topic and put is one big video and MP3 for your amusement on the following Friday. Last but not least, anyway, you can support, like, shares, reviews, all that fun stuff. It may seem small, but it does help the channel grow, helps us out. So if you have the time and you could do that, we would appreciate you for it. So, whip, 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 emergency podcast. Mortal Kombat 1 release trailer today as of recording thursday may 18th why am i time stamping this i don't know also why am i dancing around like an idiot i'm so excited like a lot of people are about this reveal about this trailer about just everything that the realm does um we've been wondering when we were going to hear more about mortal kombat the nether realm team has been you know hush hush as they usually are you know ed boone's always trolling on twitter with tweets and teases and all that fun stuff just you know humoring us fans or communicating that way um but yeah they uh haven't really announced what they were doing for a project there was a lot of rumors for a while and speculation like when is mk12 going to be re- revealed or released are they going to be doing an injustice 3 which i think we might have even talked about on this podcast a while back um and what's their next project is it even something new And we finally got our answer, kind of started to tease it, I think it was last week, with some more tweets of a clock ticking down, heading to the 12 o'clock hour, Uh, teaser Wednesday, or Tuesday or Wednesday, um, showed that clock stopping at 1 and saying it is time, or something is, time is now, not John Cena, Uh, it is time, we get the official reveal bright and early this morning at 9 a.m. Eastern and it is revealed that it is Mortal Kombat 1. So we're getting a reboot, we're getting a rehash, we're getting a retelling of the story of Mortal Kombat and those characters in that universe, which we kind of expected um, just based on how the Mortal Kombat story and series has gone over the past few iterations, but now obviously we have our confirmation and the reveal of the one compared to 12 um so i just wanted to talk about the trailer talk about my thoughts and feelings of the story and where we're going and what's included what's not included all that fun stuff so if for any reason you don't want to be spoiled about mortal kombat 1 or the most recent stories of mortal kombat 9 through 11 Maybe this is your time to step out, come back later when you're all caught up. Just a fair warning. It's been four years since Mortal Kombat 11, and then eight since, oh god, MKX. I don't even want to know how many since MK9. So, you know, that's on you, but no. If you don't want to be spoiled, now's your time. But we're going to be talking anything and everything, so just a fair heads up there. So, let's talk about the trailer to start. So what did they show off? In this trailer, it is simply just an announcement of what the game is, its official release date, its title, stuff like that. We did not see any gameplay in this trailer. This is a pure CG trailer, which kind of fits the pattern for NetherRealm and the reveals. We got the same thing with MKX with the forest fight between Scorpion and Sub-Zero. MK11, we had, once again, the same two people fighting at Shang Tsung's temple until the initial reveal of the past scorpion fighting current scorpion oh i'm sorry raiden and scorpion fought not sub-zero ha uh, but we got the cg trailer there as well so the tradition continues here where is the big fancy cg cinematic trailer that we see with this release um as always looks graphically great but once again take it with a grain of salt because it is not the gameplay trailer not to say the gameplay won't look fantastic you can look from even the jump of mortal kombat x to uh injustice 2 and i don't know if it was an engine change or what they did but graphically leaps and bounds 
of progress between those two games. Um, so I'm interested to see how things change stylistically and visually from an MK11 to an MK12 and also being next-gen hardware officially um, and no past-gen releases. So they're fully dedicated to the next-gen, so we'll have to see how things look moving forward. Exactly, Genghis. Mortal Gun! So we'll have to see graphically how it changes from 11 to now 1 being next-gen from there. So all cinematic here. We got to look at some of the characters. We got Liu Kang. Apparently Raiden was there. Didn't pick up on that initially. Uh, Lu, oh, did I say Liu Kang? I did say Liu Kang. Kung Lao, um, Katana, Melina, Scorpion Sub-Zero, and then Shang Tsung uh, were all revealed there um, to be in the game. Um, if you go to the Mortal Kombat specific website, they also do confirm that Johnny Cage will be making a return. Um, so interested there, or interesting there, not a big surprise, um, but we didn't see him in the trailer. Um, other than that, trailer just shows kind of some matchups a little bit between some characters you kind of expect. Uh, we get the release date of September 19th of 2023, so very excited um, for that. And we also get a little bit of a look at some fatalities. Now, once again, being the CG trailer, things could change. However, I think these could translate over to the games, or the gameplay rather, and these could be at least how some of the fatalities, or if they're still doing brutalities and x-rays, how some of these could look. I could definitely see the the last shot of Liu Kang being up Shang Tsung and doing the double dragon kind of move. I could definitely see that being a fatality, as I feel they did the same thing in the MK11 reveal trailer with the spin hook kick spear through the, the head. Um via scorpion so most likely that one will transfer over um, but nothing from a fight to fight standpoint it was just quick cuts between these brutal moments of people getting murdered um and showing the fatalities off there so we saw that uh so once again september release uh numerous editions have been announced so you have your your standard your premium edition and your collector's edition wide variety of stuff available depending on which version you picked um like i said it will be available for next gen consoles so ps5 xbox series both x and s nintendo switch and pc uh nether realm is going to be developing the i mean they technically developed all of them but uh there are going to be other teams working on nintendo switch and pc ports so hopefully those specialized teams will be able to uh make the magic work there um, if you happen to get the premium edition, you do get some extra stuff with that. So it's kind of like most games, you buy your game and then you buy the season pass essentially along with it. Um, so get the standard edition content, so your game, along with the combat pack, so your first group of downloadable characters. Uh, early access to the game beginning September 14th, some in-game currency, the combat pack will feature a Johnny Cage character skin and likeness of famed actor and martial artist Jean-Claude Van Damme available at launch. Early access to six new playable characters available post-launch and five new cameo characters. Yes, they spelled cameo with a K because it's Mortal Kombat. If you get the collector's edition, you get all that fancy stuff too, along with a 16.5 inch Liu Kang sculpture, some, another in-game skin, Three exclusive art prints, a steel case, and additional in-game currencies. So some nice packages. I will say that collector's edition, woohoo, very pricey, but I get it. You're buying a sculpture. Um, so great. We already have DLC confirmed. I know that's already that's a mixed topic that we could discuss another day of like, oh, you already have post-game content planned. You haven't even announced the roster already. Yada yada. I get it. It's it's a the same thing with every fighting game. There's more characters after. I just appreciate that they're, you know, got some kind of game plan roadmap for post-launch. Whatever. Take it as is. Now, the thing that first got me excited, at least in terms of reading this part, was five new cameo fighters. Now, me, being at work and reading things quickly, cameo. 
what is a cameo? Well, it's that social media you pay celebrities for to do stupid shout outs. No, it's like guest appearances, right? So I was like, oh shit, five guest characters. They're already confirming that. Not the case. If you scroll a little farther on their website, uh, cameo fighters. What are cameo fighters and how will they work in Mortal Kombat 1? Cameo fighters are a unique roster of partner characters to assist during matches, creating extended gameplay possibilities for players. These characters are chosen separately from the main roster fighters. So it is a assist character mechanic. Now, we've kind of seen something like this. Um, I want to say since MKX. We saw it in MKX, and Justice 2 had it, and MK11 had it with their tower battles. You could do a separate button input, depending on the tower, if you had an assist in that tower, and it would do a cross-screen attack that you could use to either create an opening for yourself, or if you were getting your ass whooped and you need to, <laughs> to get a break, you could do that exactly, like the Baraicho stuff. You could do that, it could help you out. Um, so similar to the modifiers, except the modifiers would affect your health, the stage, certain arena traps, stuff like that. Um, I don't know if it will be a one-to-one -one exactly that, or if this will be similar to early Marvel vs. Capcoms or Dragon Ball Fighters or Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, where you have a team of characters that, you know, technically you would swap in. We're not getting that or it's 2v2 or 3v3, but you could have those characters come in, do a quick attack to extend your combo or whatever, and then they would dart off screen. I wonder if it's going to be something like that. Um, they had this tag team mechanic back in MK9, um, so I could see it being that. Uh, it's just a matter of does it work on next gen, graphically, all that fun stuff. So we'll have to see. Just something to... I guess note about these cameo characters it is not the guest characters like I thought it is this kind of assist mechanic so interesting that they'll be adding post content to also that roster of assist characters um, I'm sure there will be guest characters I mean just like the normal games rumors and all that stuff I think there's been rumors of Homelander and oh crap there was one other one that I'm blanking on um, but we'll just have to see um, obviously you know WB being owners here pe Peacemaker thank you yeah John Cena's go oh shit it ties in the time is now John Cena is gonna be in this game um, so yeah it just matter it depends obviously WB Warner Brothers owns NetherRealm so it's gonna be kind of interesting to see who they weave into this um, I wonder if WWE would have an issue with that. That I don't know. I don't even know if they could say anything. Anyways, um, so we'll have to see who those guest characters end up being. Um, so, interesting stuff there. Seems like we're really focused on the story here. Sure. Um, rollback netcode. Still being supported for online gameplay, so if you're in the FGC and you know what that is, you know that's a great thing for connectivity. Uh, yeah. So, let's talk about story stuff. So, when we left off at Mortal Kombat 11, we kind of knew and got a hint that like things are going to be reset we had this whole timeline grandiose fight in MK11 where we got the past meeting the present and you got different versions of different characters and we're dealing with Chronica and her time crown hourglass bullshit and <clears throat> we are trying to save the day there. Good guys prevail, hey -o, and through the power of Hocus Pocus, I don't remember all specifics because this was years ago, Liu Kang is now an elder god. So he has the powers, I believe, of some fire guy and Raiden. So he's got electricity and fire. Raiden is now mortal. And depending on your ending in Aftermath, Liu Kang is now in charge of the Hourglass. And he's dealing with stuff there. 
Now, before we get into the real twists and turns of this stuff, neat, cool. We figured there would be a reset, um, just because of you know the time mechanics. There, we got the little tease of him going to see uh, Kung Lao at the end of the of the game and talking with him and being kind of. Similar to how Raiden was a mentor for Liu Kang, he would be the mentor elder god to Kung Lao. And we would go from there with the story. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how the cast we know of characters, how what's going to be different about them, what's going to change, because seemingly we're starting from the very, very beginning. So that means... You know, we see Melina here, so we know there has to be, we would assume, some Shao Kahn kind of tie-in with the experimentation, and we see briefly her teeth before she covers them up. So we know that process and cloning process is still be going on. We, Jax's arms are still fine. Ermac hasn't blown them up yet, so he hasn't gotten the metal arms. Um, the whole cyber initiative is not a thing, so we won't see Cyrax, Sector, uh, Shadow, and Smoke, at least in their robot forms. Um, they'll presumably still be human. Uh, the second generation characters that they added in, like uh, Cassie Cage and, oh crud, uh, Jackie Briggs and Takeda and the other guy <laughs> it's been a while they're not in it as far as we know um so it's going to be interesting to see kung jin thank you we're going to see it's going to be interesting to see how the, the regular cast regular cast what am i the initial cast what is going to change in their stories how it's going to change who's going to be involved um from there so We'll have to see that. Now, if we want to start throwing a wrench into this and we want to talk about continuity. Now, granted, this is video game world. Continuity, you know, could be scrapped by the wayside. Doesn't even matter. But smart me, I was like, I haven't played this story in a little while. Let's look up the plot real quick. Remind myself what the fuck happened here. Okay. So MK11 launched in April of 2019. Had a great story, a lot of fun. You go through it. Liu Kang defeats Kronika, and once again is imbued with the powers of an elder god. And then him and Raiden Mortal are going to work together to kind of figure out this whole time comeuppets, right? A few months later, they release Aftermath, which is like additional story where you play as characters from the initial combat pack DLC. So your Shang Tsung, which was your pre-order, no, he wasn't your pre-order, Shao Kahn was your pre-order, excuse me. Shang Tsung you can play as, Fujin you can play as, Night Wolf, and Sindel, okay? You might have been able to play as more, maybe you did get to play as uh, Shao Kahn, don't remember, but anyways. You play as these characters, and you're going to get the crown of Kronika, which controls the hourglass because it got broken in the fight. Liu Kang can't control it without the crown. Okay, great. So we got this weird fusion of evil characters, good characters working together for the greater good to do this thing. Okay. They go back in time before the crown's broken. Poo, poo, poo. Fight people. Get the crown. Shang Tsung turns out to be a dirtbag. Wow, who would have thought? He double crosses the people he's working on. Then you have big epic showdown between Liu Kang and Shang Tsung for the fate of humanity in the crown. Okay, great. Everybody caught up? Okay, cool. Now, here you get the player choice. One's obviously the canon ending, one's not the canon ending. You can choose good side, you can choose bad side, you win the fight, you get your ending. Good side is the canon ending. Wow, who would have thought? So you fight as Liu Kang, you beat up Shang Tsung, right? Now we get into the tricky part of continuity via Wikipedia. So let's take everything with a grain of salt, but I do remember this. In the canon ending, quotations here, if Liu Kang wins, he erases Shang Tsung from existence and recovers the crown of souls, with which he gains control over the hourglass. 
Once he forges his new era, Liu Kang visits the Shaolin Temple so he can train Kung Lao's ancestor, the great Kung Lao, to become his champion in Mortal Kombat. Okie dokie. Everybody hear that? Now, when I read this initially, Shang Tsung just control-alt-deleted from the whole storyline of Mortal Kombat, right? He never existed. Now, maybe I'm reading that wrong. Could it just be because we see Shang Tsung in this CG trailer, and he's presumably the big bad or he's causing chaos, is it just the current Shang Tsung that was a dick a hole and did the crown thing that he got control deleted? I read it initially as like, never, <laughs> never existed. If that's the case, how is he here coming through a dark portal? Are we going to get more timeline bullshit in MK12 that we maybe don't need? I don't know. If it's just that one got deleted, fine. Why would Liu Kang in charge of the hourglass allow Shang Tsung or create Shang Tsung in his timeline universe? I don't know. That's weird. But who knows? Genghis from chat says, I think Shang Tsung put his soul into the crown to fuck with everything. That's certainly possible. That's certainly possible, him and his soul magic. Um. So yeah, something to figure out there. Um, in terms of the Kung Lao situation, if he's, if we're going off of this, he's visiting the ancestor, the great Kung Lao, to become the champion of Mortal Kombat. So we're not going, based on the cinematic trailer, we're not going to that far back. We're going, like, middle area. Unless they're going to be like, oh, yeah, by the way, I helped your ancestor, and he fought Goro. I don't know the timeline. He fought Goro, and we did this thing, and I'm a cool guy like Raiden was. Hey, what up? I don't know. We'll have to see. So just another little thing to say. Jeff in chat. Isn't Shang Tsung a pre-order-only character in the new one? Could be a non-canon inclusion thing. So that's a good point. Is Shang Tsung canon or not? Yes, he is canon. We see him in the trailer. They're setting him up as the villain. The reason I'm going to say this with my chest gusto confidence that he is canon, they did the same thing with Shao Kahn in Mortal Kombat 11. You got Shao Kahn if you pre-ordered Mortal Kombat 11 at launch. He was available as DLC afterwards. I don't know if it was part of the Combat Pack 1 or if it was separate, but he was a big part in Mortal Kombat 11's story initially. So he's there. Um, yeah, I don't think it will be an unlock. I think that is just strictly DLC. Because I don't... Was he an unlock? Once again, it's been four years. Yeah, I think it was DLC. I think I think DLC. Um, so this is just a way for you to, once again, get him early. If you decide to go the pre-order route. And I believe that's regardless of edition pretty sure yeah that would add up so we got that um so yeah very intrigued to see where the story goes excited to play more mortal Kombat. once again we didn't get any gameplay so that's a little bit bummer when are we going to see gameplay now we get the whole rigmarole of like okay now we got to be here and speculate we do have the playstation showcase literally as of recording six days away it's a wednesday next wednesday playstation showcase could we see gameplay as early as then potentially or is it going to be summer games fest with jeff healy it's got to be one or the other because there's like i doubt gamescom is going to get it i don't know when tokyo game show is but i don't think they would get it um I'm, yeah, I'm really hoping for next week as well. Um, if it is next week, I'm intrigued to know why they decided to reveal it on their own and not wait till that. 
it could be a matter of stepping on toes like if we get more spider-man 2 footage or whatever other crazy shit playstation has in their back pocket to reveal like they get lost in the shuffle of discussion if that's the case fair good on you you pulled the trigger and be like hey here we are and then oh yeah we'll also show this cool stuff next week maybe that's the case um thinking back to when they revealed the other stuff when they revealed mk11 that was uh that was game awards he came out to do the the (laughs) i remember jumping out of my seat he came out to do the racing and sports sim award the scorpion spear came through the screen we got the reveal there with the rap song um and then eventually did the award after but that was the cg trailer and then the game trailer was released in april where we also got revealed about a media event where we got the fatality trailer and potentially the release date as well on there no i think the release date was before that so he has some connections with jeff a little bit i don't know if that would tie to summer games fest but one of the two we gotta have something especially if this is coming out in september which thank you netherrealm for doing this i know it sucks you keep us on the 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 the, the line for all these years we hear nothing but I can't say how much I appreciate trailer release date is like six months. Like it's not like here's Mortal Kombat and then like a flat either nothing or a flash of 2025, like something far down the line of like, fuck, <laughs> you know, I really appreciate that. I know games get excited. I know we get excited of like, oh my God, look at this shiny thing. But this, yeah, this is perfect. Announce release announce release don't give me eight years down the line (laughs) we don't need that we don't need that remember when we're all excited about elder scrolls 6 because they showed us clouds in the sky yeah what's going on with that game i don't know but anyways very excited for that um i think i mentioned it earlier before but maybe i didn't if you do pre-order premium you do get the game five days early um also with these there isn't a beta players who pre-order the game on playstation 5 and xbox series will receive mortal kombat 1 beta which is available in august so you get that uh if it's anything like mortal kombat 11's beta good times all around um so i don't know where i was going with this train of thought characters let's talk about characters so we talked about the ones who were confirmed let's talk about the ones who aren't confirmed who do we think is making this game who are the characters well it's genghis right on top of who are the characters they definitely want to see so selfishly i loved melina in mkx she was one of my go-tos i have not played her in mk11 because that was the train of thought i was going on so don't worry, we'll get back to characters, but I'm going to revert back to this for a second. We didn't see gameplay in this trailer. We need to see gameplay soon. And not that I don't think the gameplay will look beautiful. The gameplay needs to be fun. Mortal Kombat X, MKX, gameplay in that was fantastic. It was a lot of fun. It was my first Mortal Kombat jumped back to nine and then was kind of on the nether realm train from there and justice one yeah not great gameplay mkx was a lot of fun in justice two i know some people didn't like it because there was a lot of range stuff personally loved it loved injustice two absolutely had a great time with it a lot of different characters that i loved playing as i thought the dlc was fantastic shout out to the ninja turtles and just as too fantastic we got to mk11 and nether realm shines in their stories there is never going to be a, a debate about that at least for recent updates or recent games they've crushed it in their past games story is fantastic something about the gameplay for mk11 did not click I don't know what it was exactly. Once again, it's been a few years since I've played the games. But something there, just there was a disconnect. Um, Injustice 2 had great tower modes where 
you know the modifiers kept it interesting the gear kept it interesting and the different stuff you can unlock there and when i tried that mode in mk11 it felt more punishing and not in like oh ho ha ha it's difficult of annoyance than the previous games um i remember at launch there was um there was a tower i think you were against shao Kahn. i could be wrong but every once in a while the modifier that was active things the screen would go dark and you would have to fight in pitch black for like a few seconds almost like the screen would fade out pause for a few seconds come back pause for a few seconds go dark like doing this thing and it was so fucking annoying because it was one of these towers that didn't rotate out it was like a set tower and you couldn't progress to other options until you beat this tower so annoying so annoying so something about it just didn't feel as fun as an injustice 2 as an mkx uh in terms of my opinion for how it played and it didn't make it appealing to keep playing you know over and over again i will say the cast of characters in mk11 i think were great i think they had a great roster mkx had a good roster and justice 2 had a great roster like roster wise i was very happy with everything that they did have um we've bitched about it before ages ago probably at this point on the podcast too in terms of cosmetics Injustice 2's cosmetics were fantastic. You can unlock color schemes. You can unlock different um, like gear for your superheroes. Really customize them. Look, Make them look the way you want to look. Um, if you want to play with the gear statistics on or buffs, you can. You can totally negate those and just do it purely from a cosmetic standpoint. They added this in MK11. I think it was a cool addition to MK11 until you got to certain character aspects where customizations were absolutely useless what i mean by this is if i am unlocking cosmetics for my characters regardless of any game personally one i want to see it so first person games where you have cosmetics to me makes zero sense i get it you want to show off to everybody else um but i want to see these cosmetics and a lot, I feel like a lot of MK11's cosmetics that you could customize for your characters from three options, I believe, were like non applicable. So, like, it would be this little tiny vial on your hip. You can change how that looks. I'm sorry. In a fight, how often am I going to see this little vial on Scarlet's hip? You know, ever. And it was just the cosmetics. While I appreciate because it's a fun idea to have give the players the customization, it just was pointless. Masks will always be cool for masked characters. So like Scorpion had a lot of good options. Jade had good options. Um, you know, those characters had options. But it just certain characters just, they had nothing. And it just didn't make it interesting or appealing to play either with those characters or at all because like ugh, there just wasn't a lot of cool stuff so if they do decide to bring that back i feel like there's got to be more what's the term apparent changes i don't know if that's the right terminology clear changes to your characters where i feel like injustice 2 shined with that um prominence thank you very much um I feel like there needs to be more of that if they continue to choose to, or sorry, if they choose to continue that route in MK1. Something that MK11 did that I hope they continue, and it's not necessarily, I would say, a gameplay part from in terms of the the fighting, the one to one um, or one on one, is the crypt. Crypt is a really cool thing, and MK11 was just a love letter to Mortal Kombat fans who have been around forever, whether it's the movie franchise or the game franchise, you know. The Crypt in MK11 blows MKXs out of the water. So good. 
going to Shang Tsung's island, doing the puzzles, discovering different things, getting the treasures and the lockables that way. Just chef's kiss that presentation that they did in, in MK11. I don't know what they can do in MK1 because obviously there's a lot of like nostalgia in the MK11 one with where you are unlocking stuff with Shang Tsung's temple. Um, but that was great. And I hope that they continue with the crypt and make it interesting and appealing and not just MK9s where it's this giant graveyard of tombstones that you just go up to spend your in-game currency on, unlock different concept art and uh, costumes and stuff like that. That's what I hope. <clears throat> they at least continue to make that an interesting mode um, for that. I just felt like the MK11 crypt was a test to do an adventure story mode maybe i think they did in one of the earlier mortal kombat something like that um really hope the story's a conquest mode i'm not sure what you mean by that but i've had no issue with what they've done with these past stories whether it's mkx or the injustice series as long as it's interesting and the through line is good then that's great. Oh, it's from Deception and Deadly Alliance. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, my Mortal Kombat experience is simply 9 through 11. Um, I've played a little bit of 2 in the arcades, um, but was never great at them. Um, and then, yeah, my only other experience is just watching people play versus mode for uh, through each other, whether it was Ultimate, uh, MK, or whatever. Um so I don't have any personal experience with that. But okay, an RPG mode of the fights. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, I'd be down with them playing around with it and giving it a try as long as, once again, it, just like any game, uh, as long as it's interesting and fun, I it's not like I'm anti against a certain mode, if that makes sense. So going back to characters <laughs> after this remembering and tangent. Um, so... I'm going to pull up the characters I'm hoping for. So I talked about Katana. Or not, sorry. Not Katana. Jesus. Molina. Molina was a big one in MKX that I really enjoyed um, using and playing as. Um, I also liked the, the ninja robots. I think it was Triborg and MKX. So you kind of had a little bit of a fusion between all the robots and their movesets, depending on which one you selected. Uh, he was a good character. Uh, if we're talking guest characters for MKX, Jason had one variation, which was a, a good, I thought a good iteration in the series was the uh, the variations. I think they had it in 11 as well, if I'm not mistaken. Just not as memorable, in my opinion. Um, so Jason had one good one that I was okay with. Um, MK11 had a lot of good characters. I personally did didn't play many of them i think Liu kang surprisingly was the only one i really liked a lot and played a lot of there wasn't just there just wasn't any characters outside of him that maybe moveset wise i really ever got comfortable with he was the one that i seemed to engage with the most pick up on the most on combination stuff like that um i did enjoy sindel from the time i played her um some things you could uh, war combo wise there um hmm. so yeah we'll have to see noob was always a cool one visually um i know a lot of play people played noob cybot so um i get that one is um a little interesting uh let's see baraka needs to come back also devora but make her a rushdown character like x they killed her in 11. I hated it. Yeah, Devorah's cool. I liked her look in 10 more than I liked in 11. Um, and I also played her more in 10. Um, but yeah, she was a cool character that they added. Um, looking at the rosters, it's going to be interesting, like we talked about with like the second generation and the robots not being the robots, depending on where we start in this timeline. It's going to be interesting to see where... Like I'm looking here and I'm like, there's more characters like, nope, I don't think they're going to be in. Like, we can presume the Elder Gods entirely are not going to be in this unless some Shang Tsung alternate 
timeline portal thing, whatever, is happening. So no Centrion, or Cetrion. No Garrus, who was a new character in the last one. Um, no Shinnok. Is there anybody else? Hmm. I think those are the only ones that were playable. Yeah. So we won't see them. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if they bring back certain characters like a Kotal Kahn. I thought he was great uh, to see where he fits into things or like see him early stages before he became a Kotal. Um, Devora, you mentioned. Uh, Cabal before he's burned. Is the Collector going to be around? We just added him into 11, so now we could have him show up more earlier stages of his life. <laughs> um you know, we'll have the original Sub-Zero, we presume, and not the second iteration of Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero. So new new, yeah. no Noob Saibot as well, because I believe he was the first or second Sub-Zero. Man, that gets confusing. Is Kano going to have his eyeball ripped out? Who's to say? <laughs> Who's to say? Um, we'll have to see. As far as PS2 era, I really think Havoc should be in it. Get some Chaos Realm representation. The name sounds familiar. I can't picture him. I wonder if we'll get... <laughs> I wonder if we'll get more animal representation. So we had Goro in MKX. I don't believe he was in 11. We saw his uh, rotting corpse um, in the... Uh... Oh, interesting. Um... We saw him in the crypt, uh, but will we see, we we got Shiva in, didn't we get Shiva? Yeah, she was Aftermath DLC. Got her in 11. Will we see Kintaro make a return? Will we see Motaro make a return? Get Horseman in there. <laughs> like, that will be interesting. Um, do we get meat? <laughs> do we get him back? Oh my god. I, I think, oh, let's see. Let's look at the roster of who they've confirmed again. So I feel like there's got to be some quote-unquote safe bets. So we got Liu Kang, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Raiden, Kung Lao, Katana, Melina, Shang Tsung, Johnny Cage, and quote-unquote many others. So right now we got nine characters confirmed. So who's our safety bets? I assume Sonya's a safety bet. I assume Jax is a safety bet. So there's two. Do we bring back Shao Kahn? I don't know, because it seems like they're putting Shang as the big, big bad, which I think was how the initial game started, right? Shang was the bad, and then we got the reveal of Shao Kahn being more prominent. At least that's how it ran in MK9 when we redid the first trilogy. Who knows? <sighs> la, 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 la. I'd like to see Ermac come back. I thought he was cool. Reptile? He could be a safe one. Let's see. He made 10. Did not make 11 because he died? Question mark. <laughs> I don't know. So that would be interesting. You know what? Let, for shits and giggles, let's look up the Mortal Kombat roster like the initial roster now i gotta figure out how to do this without telling me or giving me mortal kombat one <laughs> the new mortal kombat one you know mortal kombat first installment 1992 god damn Okay, playable characters. Cage, Kano, Liu Kang, Raiden, Scorpion, Sonya, and Sub-Zero. So. So we talked about Sonya. We talked about... Uh, I guess I didn't count Kano, but Kano in there. Okay. Reptile was a hidden character. Goro was a sub-boss. Shang Tsung was the boss-boss. And then rumored characters apparently were Ermac and whoever the fuck Nimbus Terrafowl <laughs> is. Was a gag created by a magazine. Okay. 
Gotcha. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm pretty open to having anybody, if I'm not um, gonna lie. Baraka is annoying, in my opinion, in terms of move set, but I'm not against it. Um, and then yeah, it's just a matter of figuring out like who we see from an early standpoint. Like Nightwolf, I enjoyed. I enjoyed more. I would enjoy more Nightwolf. And then guest characters. Do we even want to speculate guest characters and get crazy with it? Hmm. Is anybody from Dune? <laughs> that's a that's a Warner thing, right? Oh. Some breaking news from Genghis in the chat. MK1 community chat, of course, was spelled with a K, with Ed Boon and Tyler Lansdowne tomorrow, May 19th at 10 a.m. Pacific, 12 Central. Okay, well, I wonder what will be said there, but interesting. Interesting, interesting. More news, news, and news. <laughs> we'll have to see. Uh, yeah, just interested. Uh, fighting games live and die by their rosters. So as long as there is enough characters and there's enough interesting characters, I'm down for anybody. Uh, Mortal Kombat uh, Mortal Kombat 10 had 24 playable at launch with 9 additional. And MK11 had 25 at launch with 12 downloadable. So probably get in that similar range of 20 to 25 we'll have to see ferator yeah ferator deserves some more respect they were that was a cool character combination in 10 um yeah so devora would be cool to see a return ferator would be cool to see a return kenshi was great uh koto connor i shouted out takeda was fantastic but doesn't make sense for the timeline purposes um i like tremor i like tremor in 10 he was another one i used a little bit same with tanya before they redesigned her mm. who the hell is frost oh frost was the robot sub-zero lady right 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 most broken character. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. Uh, yeah. We'll have to see. I don't know. I'm very excited for MK1. I hope you guys are too. Um, and yeah, we'll just have to see. We'll have to wait with bated breath to see when this game trail game trailer reveal is. Hopefully it's next week and we don't have to wait too, too long. But just kind of wanted to come on here, rant and rave about Mortal Kombat, get excited. Um, looking forward to streaming through at least MKX and 11 again. Go through those stories again and have a good time with that. And uh, yeah, tonight, tomorrow might get more info as well. Yeah, we'll have to see what Boone and uh, Lance now talk about over there. Um, if they're just kind of, you know, what's the term? Sneaky about it or just kind of like grass roots top stuff or if they'll they'll shadow drop something as well we'll have to see time will tell but uh yeah nether realm keep crushing it keep doing your thing as long as it's fun that's what matters and uh, i guess i'll hold on for injustice 3 <laughs> we'll keep waiting for that <laughs>